Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we are checking out the Niheme NH525 Plus. It is a foldable 1080p camera, Wi-Fi FPV, altitude hold, headless mode, one kilo takeoff and land, toy grade RC quokka, they're ready to fly. So taking a closer look, we got the foldable arms and we have the longer landing legs in the front arms and the shorter landing legs in the rear arms to stick that landing. We have an LED light in the rear above the battery bay and a couple of LED lights looking like smiling eyes up in the front. We have the embedded brushed motors in the arms and the double bladed floppy props. We have a 60 degree manually tilt adjustable 1080p Wi-Fi FPV camera in the front. It will take 1080p photos and 720p videos and record them into the Wi-Fi phone app and thus into your camera roll of your device. The Wi-Fi phone app is called the Niheme FPV app. It is a free downloadable app in the app store so go ahead and check it out. There's the power push button on and off switch on the top of the canopy and the battery bay is in the rear. Now the battery is a 3.7 volt 1200 milliamp size battery. It is said to be good for about 11 minutes of flight time. Now it comes with two of these batteries for a total flight time of about 22 minutes. The remote controller has a spring loaded pull out phone holder and there is a built in ridge on the remote controller to rest your phone as well. We have the speed changing button on the left shoulder and we have the photo button on the right shoulder. Short press for photos and long press for videos. The remote controller is nicely sized and it feels really good in the hands and the gimbals are nice and smooth. It is not sticky at all. So here are the functional buttons. We got the one kilo takeoff and one kilo land button with the short press, long press for emergency stop. We have the headless mode button. We have a circle fly button and a high speed rotate buttons. The buttons on the right side are for trims and down pressing on the pitch and roll stick will allow you to do flips. So both sticks at the bottom and in will calibrate the gyros of the quadcopter and both sticks at the bottom and out will arm and disarm the motors of the quadcopter. And on the bottom is the sliding on and off power switch and it will take four triple A size batteries. All right guys, so here we go with the Neheme NH525. We got a fully charged battery inserted. So let's go ahead and get it started. So powering it up. We got white LED lights looking like smiling eyes in the front and a red LED light in the rear. So let's position it facing that way and power up the remote controller. Up and down on the throttle finalizes the binding process. There you go. Now what you want to do next is calibrate the gyros of this quadcopter. So both sticks at the bottom and in. We'll calibrate the gyros and the lights do flash. And then once they go solid, it has finished calibrating. So we are ready to go. So first, let's go ahead and start up the phone app. And I'm using my iPad once again. Go to your settings and go to your Wi-Fi section of your settings and join in on the Wi-Fi network of the quadcopter, the Niheme NH525 Wi-Fi network and connect to it. There you go, connected and start up the phone app. It is called the Niheme FPV app. It is a free downloadable app in the app store. So go ahead and check it out. Let's get it started and see what it looks like. All right, Nehemi would like to access your photos. Allow access to photos. Anything else? Nehemi would like to find and connect devices. Okay, Nehemi would like to access the microphone. Okay. And let's go ahead and sign in here. And let's go ahead and skip that sign in and enter the device. And it is a phone app, so it's a small screen so you're gonna have to enlarge it okay so let's go ahead and screen record three two one boom screen is recording and I have Wi-Fi FPV let's see the camera is all the way up 
to zero degrees. So let's see what we got here. Yeah, we got the typical toy grade camera. So it's pretty decent, but it is not something that you're going to record and, you know, film with this quadcopter. It's just for uh, toy purposes and just to see where you're going and all that stuff. So let's go ahead and take some photos. Let me go ahead and take a photo with the hard remote and short press on the photo button. There you go. The page flipped over. One more. And one more. Let's see if we can take a photo with the phone app. There you go. Page flipped over. So you can take a photo with the hard remote as well as the phone app. All right. So let's go ahead and hit the record button on the phone app. And a counter appears. And we are recording a video. I'm going to leave my iPad right here on this table and we'll come back to it in a little bit. So let's go ahead and check out the quadcopter here. So everything is calibrated so all you got to do is bolt six to the bottom and out will arm the motors of the quadcopter. So there we go, armed it and do that again to disarm it. Now let's see if the one key to take off and land button works by itself. Oh short press it and it will automatically take off and I'm the motors at the same time. All right, so here we go. It's got a slight rear drift, so I'm gonna fix that issue here. And slightly left drift, I'm gonna fix that issue as well. There's a tiny bit of a breeze. So let's go ahead and check it out here. Now it is just hovering in one spot, very nice. Let's see if it yaws in one spot as well. It kind of drifts off. Okay. Nice and quiet. And let's see. Okay. We are in speed number one. So let's go and check it out. Full pitch. And turn. Full pitch. For speed number one, it's pretty decent. There we go. Not bad. Okay, full pitch and full yaw with a little bit of roll. That's speed number one. That's not bad. Okay, let's see. Speed number two. Full pitch, full yaw with a little bit of roll. Nice. And just full pitch. Turn around and come this way. Hey, that's pretty decent. Okay, there was slight delay right there. So I'm thinking this thing doesn't have very good control. Once it goes a little further away, perhaps because of the 2.4 gigahertz on the transmitter as the as well as the Wi-Fi phone app. But speed number two is doing pretty good. Not bad. Full pitch. Okay. Full pitch. Speed number three. Speed number three is nice. Digs in a little bit. Turn. Digs in. So you're going to have to let go. Not bad. Okay. Y'all. Come back this way slightly misbehaving in that direction there but this direction I have no issues everything works just right but when I go on that side seems like I have slight see it rotates a little further than I intended so that side has a slight issue okay full yaw full pitch with a little bit of roll so nice little funnels not bad not bad at all okay so let's go and check out some of the features here one key to land short press 
So none of that long press. The long press is emergency stop, actually. So <laughs> let's go ahead and check it out here. So arming the motors and raising it up just a little bit to check out the emergency stop. I totally forgot about that emergency stop thing. Okay, let me see if I can hover right there and e-stop. There you go. It, that was emergency stop. Okay, so when you got your quadcopter tangled up in some tree branches, the motors are still spinning. Uh, to shut it off, go ahead and long press on that one key to take off and one key to land button to shut the motors off so you don't burn the motors out. Okay, so one key to take off. Once again, short press. All right. So let's go ahead and check this out. We got the headless mode here. And when I push it, it goes that way. When I pull it, it comes back this way. And it's facing that way, but let's see. It's facing to the left. And if I push it forward, it'll still go forward. And if I pull it, it'll still come back. So that is headless mode. It doesn't matter which way the quadcopter is facing. Even in a spin, it'll still go out. And when you pull it, it'll still come back which is just amazing going to the left in a spin and going to the right in a spin so that's just awesome so when you're way out there and you don't know which way the quadcopter is facing just pull it and it'll come back to you to the southbound heading that you have calibrated the gyros I had a slight miscommunication right there so this thing has slight interference I do believe so headless mode and we are out all right so let's go ahead and see what this circle fly is about circle fly it's kind of doing a point of interest but a small one and let's see the high speed rotation it's just doing a high speed yaw so there you go you can impress your friends you can impress your family with those features and do some flips as well down pressing on the pitch and roll stick and then direct which way you want the quadcopter to perform the flips and all four directions of flips can be had nice pretty decent yeah and we are in speed number three well let's go back down the speed number one and see if I can FPV here hopefully the video quality is decent okay I'm pushing it out and I'm turning around but yeah we do have a slight delay and there I am I'm gonna come towards me and fly over me and turn around and go back out. I'm going back out that way. Okay, coming back out this way. And as you can see, you see a lot of ground. You don't see any sky at all because it doesn't have a gimbal or anything. So the, co the camera is attached to the quadcopter. You can manually tilt it, but tilting it down more you're gonna see more ground if you pitch forward so if you want to see the ground and get some video of the ground from the air and you want to go up in altitude you're gonna to have to manually tilt the camera first but you can see what's on the bottom or you can just tilt forward and there you go so if you go get a little bit of height then you're gonna be able to see a little bit more of what's below okay what the heck am I okay turning around turning around looking for myself here I should be right about here either that or I'm right above myself where am I? Okay. I'm completely on the opposite side of the car. 
looking completely the other way. So there it is coming back this way and it rotates a little bit more than I want. So there you go. I'm right below it turning around. So it's got the antennas inside of the remote controller so you can probably open up the remote controller and maybe take the antenna out that'll give you a little bit more distance but it's okay now that I got a little bit of height it is listening to me better I can finally turn the quadcopter and it's not giving me like latency here but it does rotate a little bit more than what I want okay so let's check it out let's see how far I can take this thing so continuing to push and that should be about a hundred meters right there or close to it and looks like it's not going any more than that it is slowly coming down so I'm gonna go ahead and pull it see if I can pull it and bring it back home it is going down I got my hands above my head and there you go I have reconnected so yeah only about 100 meters it's still not quite listening come on come on back okay here we go so safely I would maybe fly this thing about up to maybe about 70 80 meters to be on the safe side you don't have a disconnect see like right there I got kind of a disconnect on this quadcopter so the range is not that great okay and it is coming down even though I'm trying to throttle up so that is basically the battery life on this quadcopter alright guys so we got the second battery inserted in here and I'm gonna be flying it with the phone app on my iPad so let's get it started so both sticks to the bottom and out arms the motor and just throttle up and you can fly the quadcopter with your phone app very nice we are in speed one let's increase the speed here so it responds a little bit better and it's nice and smooth let me get a little bit more height so yeah look at that speed number two and you can fly it with the phone app turning around and look at that nice response we don't have the interference with the hard remote so this is the remote controller from the phone app solo which is also 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi and the hard remote is 2.4 gigahertz as well so if you want to fly it sporty just turn off the phone app so you're not interfering with the hard remote and vice versa there you go Hey, okay, pretty decent and that's speed number two not bad huh let's go to speed number three yeah look at that speed number three still slightly over rotates and I see that the video goes in and out uh oh okay it's in a spin by itself look at that so let's see so it doesn't have good distance by itself either it's not that it doesn't have interference it just doesn't have good range okay so let's go ahead and bring it in just for fun I guess you can't travel that far if you got a Wi-Fi repeater well that'll help out the situation a lot more so let's go ahead and bring it down in altitude a little bit and bring it closer here so we can check out some of the features okay let it hover right here and let's check out the gyro 
and a little clock up there appears so tilting action to fly your clock out there to the right uses a gyro data on your device to fly your quad which is just insane it's kind of like uh, the DJI's uh, the one-handed controller it's been around a long time remember SEMA came out with a one-handed controller on their what is it the X21 or something like that that was like four or five years ago wasn't it but look at that you can fly this clock out there with the tilting action of your phone or device which is pretty decent and it's very accurate too look at that nice okay let me get out and bring it back in here and let's go and try out the uh, flight planner which you draw lines okay so there we go and I see that there's a scale on the bottom one to one scale so when I draw a line it'll go that much draw a line forward it'll go that much okay draw a line backwards it'll come back to me that much and so on and so forth so you can draw multiple lines to keep on flying in in one direction but it does bob back and forth so let's try the one to two scale so when I draw a line now it should go a little further there there you go yeah there you go now let's draw a big circle and let it fly in a big circle by itself automated it's not the hugest circle but it is a circle so let's bring it back let's see one to three scale let's bring it back with one to three scale see how far it travels okay go a little bit longer but it's not the greatest one to four scale yeah there we go come on let's see if I can bring it back one to five yeah better yet and I'm pretty sure one to five is the maximum ratio yeah goes back down to one to one so there you go that is flight planner for you there you go you can kind of keep it under your control and draw little lines and draw a semi-circle not bad not bad yeah it works pretty good actually okay let's get out of the flight planner and fly it with the virtual sticks as long as you don't go too far this thing is pretty good it's nice and accurate let's fly around myself here not bad you can have a little fun in your backyard just don't go too far or fly near trees because it's very mild and look at that it looks like I'm running out of battery hopefully not so before it runs out of battery let me go ahead and bring it in and I guess that'll conclude this review video of the Nehemi NH525 plus so if you want to check it out for yourself the link to purchase is down below I'm gonna manually land it now so with that thank you so much for checking out the video have a great day and we'll see you again next time almost made it to the landing pad emergency stop or is that emergency sock yeah emergency sock <laughs>